Let's take you to somewhere completely different and we've got a bit of a world exclusive. A cassette featuring a previously unheard studio recording from a young David Bowie will be auctioned next week. We're going to play some extracts from the cassette in a moment. The cassette was owned by a musician who'd simply forgotten about it. It was rediscovered during a clear out of his belongings some 50 years after the original recording. It features three songs recorded by Bowie in around 1965, a period when... He, as an artist, was still going under his real name, David Jones, and was trying to break into the music industry. Joining me now, Paul Fairweather, director of Amiga Auctions. Good morning. Good morning, Emma. And Jonathan Wingate, a music journalist and broadcaster who worked as Bowie's press spokesman from the mid-90s to 2001. Good morning to you, Jonathan. Good morning, Emma. Uh, Paul, let me come to you first. Do we know where the recordings originally took place and when? We don't know exactly, no. We, what we do know is it's mid, mid to late 60s. We, think, we thought it was 65 originally, but then some Bowie experts have uh, listened to them and think that it may, a couple may be actually from circa 1968, but it's a bit of an unknown as to when and where they were recorded because they, they, they're undocumented um, and, and previously unheard. So Anything written on the box or little notes to go with this? Just the track listings and uh, Davy Jones. Davy Jones, um, obviously Bowie's... Uh, original name there so that that's all we had to go on and we've obviously listened to them and shared them with a couple of people and that's what that, they were thinking it's possibly 68 but one of them may be 65 so let's have a listen to a little bit of something here then uh here's bowie making a false start as he adjusts his pitch for a track called i live in dreams and remember everyone listening this hasn't been broadcast anywhere else before now on a cloud, instead of asking what to tell you And this is Bowie getting the track right. Yes, I've got you taste for loving me. You won't my heart, but not my mind. Whatever I do, I shall be free. I live in dreams. Oh, lovely to hear that. Uh, how much are you expecting this to fetch, Paul? We're to, our estimates around the five thousand mark, but I'll be, if I'm honest, I wouldn't be surprised if it sold for more. We we had some recordings last year, or about his first ever recording um, from 1963. We estimated a similar figure, around five to ten thousand. It sold for thirty-two thousand, so it'd be nice if it repeated that again. Yes, and and the owner of these tapes just forgot about them. Well, he the owner is was a friend of the musician who who originally owned the tapes, and it was when he was clearing the the flat on behalf of his friend that he found all these cassettes, uh, various other cassettes in there. And it's not only only recently that he actually um, discovered that this particular one was David Bowie, um, not long after the, the original musician had passed away. Right. Wow. Okay, well, let's bring in Jonathan. You, you worked with Bowie. Uh, you became great friends. What was it like listening to this sort of insight, this sort of tape from, we think, around 1965? That's very emotional. And I think it's probably earlier than that. His actual debut single was uh, Liza Jane, and that was 1964 under the name Davy Jones with the King Bees. And I think this is a recording with his first band, The Comrades. Oh. It's interesting that melodically you can hear just a touch of the man who sold the world there, a tiny little smidgen. Um, but it's fascinating hearing him finding his feet. Mm. He often talked to me about those days. Um, he didn't really have a musical identity, so he was kind of looking for a for a, a musical home at that point. He didn't know whether he was a mod or a soul boy or a rocker. You know, he hadn't quite worked out what he wanted to be. It's, it sounds almost yard budget birds ish at that point mm. and then of course we think of him as this fully formed artist who beamed down from another planet with space oddity that's 1969 but you can hear the voice there he's, he's just class i think is the word he is he just had this something about him that nobody else had of course he started out as the saxophone player in the band um didn't even want to be the singer originally <laughs> um, he'd been having saxophone lessons and i think someone had stepped on on the singer's foot at a gig and that's how he landed up singing originally. Oh, wow. Do you, um, do, how, how do you think he would feel as his friend about this being out there? Do you think he, he may feel a bit embarrassed or how do you think he, he would, would react? 
I think he would ha have a little, a, a sweet little wry smile on on his uh, face, thinking that someone was even interested in this. Um, this, the, you know, he often talked about just not really having an identity and just being desperate for a break um, at, that, at this point, hanging around in South London. Then he moved over to hanging around in Soho, just trying to get someone interested in his career. How um, old this was, was he? How old was he? This is, he he's about, well, he's 1964, so he'd have been 17 or something like that. Didn't release his first album till 1967 um, and then didn't have a hit till 1969. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's plugging just, away. you know, he was plugging away. And I think it's fascinating. We do think of him a bit like Elvis Presley, you know, had recorded a demo um, a year before he first went into Sun Studios. Um, and we, we just think of these people as being these fully formed geniuses who just arrive as if from nowhere. But in, in David's case, he was just working away at it, just trying to get a break, we, we, along with a lot of other people at this time. Mark Bolan also didn't quite have an identity until he started to, to make some headway. We've had a bit of a music theme this morning, Jonathan. We've been asking people for a Brexit in a song, where we're up to a Brexit in a lyric. Have you got any that spring to mind? Well, this this song, um, I mean, that, this is quite kind of apt, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it, yeah. Go on, in, in what respect? <laughs> well, it's, it's I Never Dreamed. It's uh, it's pretty apt, you know. It's, we, we can all dream of a, of a solution that's never going to come. <laughs> um, <you know. laughs> well, there we go. You, you've brought it together beautifully. Let's end our time together, Jonathan Paul. Thank you for your time uh, by listening to one more track from this, this newly found, newly rediscovered cassette. This one you can find on YouTube from the auctioneers. It's called It's True, My Love. Have you heard the story of how I feel and who I love? Yesterday morning I was feeling blue. I felt the way all morning till I looked at you. It's true, my love. It's you, my love. It's true, my love. It's you, my love. It's you. Lovely. Bit of a world exclusive for you. We can't say that every single day, but some previously unheard music from a young David Bowie finding his feet. That's given us a bit of a respite.